Tony Girard for Shawnee College Science in Seconds. I'm down here in Carroll, Illinois, because I want to talk about a really special tree. And Carroll has more big individuals of this type of tree than any place I'm aware of. And it's this guy right behind me, which is Ginkgo biloba. Now you're probably more familiar with Ginkgo biloba as a memory supplement that comes from this tree. But the name Ginkgo biloba comes from the fact that sometimes the leaves have two lobes like this, but what I find is more often than not, they're just kind of shaped like a fan, like that, okay? But ginkgo biloba is native to China, and it's classed in with the gymnosperms, which is the same group of plants that contain the pine, the spruce, and the cedar, but it's much more similar to far more primitive plants like the cycads than it is to a pine or a spruce. And at one time, back in the Mesozoic, uh, the time of the dinosaurs, there were many, many different species of ginkgo and they were spread widely across the world. And then, about 70 million years ago, we had that big mass extinction that took out the dinosaurs and a lot of other life, and it took out all those different types of ginkgos, except for this one, except for ginkgo biloba. And apparently ginkgo biloba went way down in distribution and population. As far as we're aware, at one point, there were maybe only three areas left in the world, all in China, that had any ginkgo biloba. And then about a thousand years ago, ginkgo biloba made a partnership with humans. Now, ginkgo biloba is one of those plants that comes in a separate male and female. And this big one behind me is a female. And the fruit of one of these trees has an outer covering that smells really bad. I've heard it compared to vomit, I've heard it compared to manure. But anyway, inside that nasty smelling fruit is an edible nut. And it never really caught on in Western culture. And some people actually have a real severe allergy to it, like a peanut allergy. But in China, in Japan, and other Asian countries, it's still eaten. And so about a thousand years ago, people started spreading ginkgo biloba around the world again. And then about in the later 1800s, it became a popular lawn tree in North America. And like I said, Cairo has a bunch of really big ones. So ginkgo biloba, uh, the last remaining individual species of a group that dates back to the time of the dinosaurs. How cool is that?